Let's do a simple lab activity to understand the usage of shared access signatures. I'm logged into my Azure portal and connected to my storage account called Information Hosting. Under Settings, you will see something called Shared Access Signatures. Let's click on it. And here, you will see the same screenshot that was shown in the previous video. Here, we have the options to select and unselect the services, the level of permissions that you want to grant, and also the allowed resource types. So let's say you want to grant the developer access to blob storage only. That means you will tick just the blob box here and untick file, queue, and tables. Let's give him more restricted permissions. I do not want the developer to write anything to my blob account. So I will untick write and also untick delete, list. Well, let's keep list because he should be able to list and traverse through the folders. Adding is not okay, creating is not okay. So the developer with this set of permissions can just list and read the object inside my blob storage. Let's go to the next option. Start an expiry date time. Now let's select from 23rd of September, which is today, and then the time as well, which is 8.57, and end time is till 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, I must also select the time zone. I'm not in UTC, so I'll select the time zone. Let's say the current time zone. So that means I will be allowed to access from about 9 p.m. to 5 o'clock in the morning. You can, of course, change these time zones and also the start and end time. The allowed IP addresses, you can put the IP address here or even the IP address range. Allowed protocols, you can leave it as HTTPS because that's more restrictive as compared to the second option, which is HTTPS and HTTP. Which key do you want to use? Key 1 or key 2? Yeah, we got just two keys here and these keys are picked up from access keys which we saw in the previous videos. Now I'll click on generate SAS and connection string. If I scroll down further, I will then see a SAS token generated. Now this is the URL that I will present to my developer and ask him or her to use this URL to connect to my blob storage. Now these SAS URLs can be used in an application like Microsoft Storage Explorer. I will use Azure Storage Explorer to connect to my blob account. Click on add account here and then select use a shared access signature URI. When you click next, you can just copy and paste the URI from Azure portal. We'll go back to the portal once and then copy the blob service SAS URL by clicking on this little button which is used to copy the things into the clipboard go back to my storage explorer and paste the uri it should automatically fill up the fields let's click next and connect now you should see that you are connected to information hosting storage account and then the only thing that's listed here is the blob containers you do not have tables queues and any other entity inside the storage account well you can also see the containers inside the blob well yeah you will be able to see all the data inside it but you will not be able to upload content to it because you just have read permissions let's try to upload a file and see if we are allowed to do so so i'll just click on upload and files and then click on these three little dots to give me the file picker then I'll just pick up some random file from my desktop, let's say compliance.pdf and just say upload. It is currently queued, uploading group and then it failed. It says that the request is not authorized to perform this operation using the permissions, which is absolutely right. We granted permissions only to read and list, but the developer tried to upload content to our blob container you can also grant multiple permissions now let's go back to the azure portal and grant more permissions to this so let's say i want to grant read write delete add and create permissions and then say generate sas okay copy this url and then go back to the storage explorer and then i'll try to connect one more time by clicking on add an account sas signature Say next and copy the URI 
you are doing the exact same steps that we did earlier. And now, instead of using this, I will use the second blob container to upload the content. I will use the exact set of steps that we did earlier, upload the files into my blob container. So scroll down till the time I find my file. I'll just pick up some random file here and say upload. And this time I should be allowed to upload because I have the right permissions at this time. Looks like it is uploading and I am now able to see the file inside my blob container. Now this will be visible inside the blob in the graphical user interface as well. Let's go and verify that. So the blobs and then go into my container called payroll data and then I must have my ADFS file. Good. So you understood the importance of shared access signatures. These can be used to granularly control the level of permissions the developer has right from the IP addresses, time range, date can be specified and also the level of permissions like read, write, delete, list, etc. to your blobs, tables, queues can be very granularly specified using shared access signatures.